You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Hey everyone, welcome to Forbidden Knowledge Podcast. I'm Billy Carson, and today I have a very special guest, Chris Daughtry. He's a very good friend of mine, and I really can't wait to get this podcast started. Chris Daughtry is a singer, songwriter, and actor. He is the lead vocalist and guitarist for the rock band Daughtry, which he formed after placing fourth on the fifth season of American Idol. Daughtry's self-titled debut album became the fastest-selling debut rock album in Nielsen SoundScan history, selling more than one million copies in only five weeks of its release. In its ninth week of release, Daughtry reached number one on the Billboard chart. Chris Daughtry is the third most successful American Idol contestant in terms of record sales behind Kelly Clarkson, Carrie Underwood, who both won their respective seasons. At the 50th Grammy Awards, the band was nominated for Best Rock Song and Single, It's Not Over. Welcome, Chris Daughtry. So, Chris Daughtry, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Billy. How are you? All right, man. Look, it's really, really a pleasure. As you know, I am a big fan of your work for many, many years. Um, As a matter of fact, the first time we made contact, I was listening (laughs) to one of your songs. (laughs) It was crazy. (laughs) You know, it's the universe, man. Yeah, that's how it works, man. That's how it works. I literally was listening to September, one of your tracks, wow. one of your songs, and then I saw a notification on my phone, and I, it said Chris Daughtry. So I said, "Oh, Spotify has notifications now, or something like that." Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what it was. I tapped on it. It was Instagram. You know, oh, okay. and, uh, and that's when we started having our conversations about yeah, yeah, things yeah. That we talk about behind the scenes or whatever. And I was like, "Wow, that is the universe." Is incredible. Like I'm listening to September by Daughtry, and then I get a notification and a contact <laughs> by you at the same time. Crazy, That's crazy, that yeah, it's crazy. Well, yeah, simulation that, that, theory. That man. kind of stuff. That stuff happens to me all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, real powerful, real powerful. Now you know, obviously, some people who may know you, but a lot of the people that follow my accounts might not actually fully know the true depths of who you truly yep. are. So I want to walk them through a little bit, even though you've probably been asked these questions a million times. But how did you get Let's your go. start in music? Well, I um, I think um, it goes back to uh, well, it goes back to being a teenager, and mm-hmm. um. I kind of always sang along to the radio and just thought that that was what everybody did. Mm. Um, and I had this knack for mimicking whoever I was listening to. Uh, so like, I, re- I remember like, uh, I remember like Rick Astley, you know, like, never going to give you up. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Which I was very, very shocked to find out that was a redheaded white dude. When I saw his video, I was like, where, where's the black guy? <laughs> he got a lot of soul, man. A lot of like, soul. Man, this guy does not sound like he looked. Yeah. And um, and and I and I think that was like, um, that was kind of, I would say the start, but I didn't really have any interest in music. I was I wanted to be a comic book artist. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be the next Jean Claude Van Damme. You know, I wanted to be a martial arts star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then in my teenage years, um. You know, I got more into listening to music, more mm-hmm. like um, I was more I found myself more entranced by it. And I found myself like kind of really diving into these songs and, and albums and mm-hmm. and trying to emulate them. In a, in a, it was very different than what I did as a little kid. It was like 
I want to learn how this guy's doing this. I want to, yeah. I want to, um, you know, I want to sing like this guy, mm. you know, like Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, um, mm. Ed Kowalczyk from live. Like those were, these guys were like my, my teachers, so to speak. Mm. And, um, this was back in the nineties. Yeah. And that, that style was very, uh, it pulled me in, in a way that other music hadn't and it made me feel something. And, 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 um, I had a friend in high school that uh, brought his guitar to school one day and I didn't even know he played and he was over there just, it, it was like into the class and wasn't really anything going on. And he, he was, uh, kind of playing around and he was playing some stuff that I was into and it was like, you know, some sound garden or, or I think it was like, yeah, it was like fell on black days or something. And I was like, Oh, this dude is playing the kind of stuff I'm into. Mind you, yeah. my dad has played guitar my whole life and I didn't care at all about it. <laughs> like, of course I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, he played country music and it just didn't really kind of, it didn't draw me in the way mm. this did. And uh, I was like, dude, you're going to have to show me some chords. Mm. One thing led to another. I'm in class one day, same class, uh, different day. And we're becoming closer friends. And this was algebra class. Mm. And <laughs> the teacher, the teacher was like Mr. Ron Schultz, who I credit to this day for my music career. Yeah. And you'll know why in a minute. Um he got bored, didn't didn't really know what to assign anybody. And he was like, hey, um, everybody get in groups of like three and we're going to um, write a poem or a song using the terms that we've learned this week. Here are the words. And wow. I thought that was a fun assignment. And I was like, yeah. you know, it was me, my buddy Robert, who played mm -hmm. guitar and this girl for the life of me, I cannot remember her name and <laughs> I feel like a terrible person for that, but oh, man. she wrote the poem. She like, it was called average. <laughs> 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 average. Average. And um, I looked at Robert. I was like, dude, you should come over to the house later. Let's make, let's like work this up into mm -hmm. like a, like a power ballad or something like really do it for real. And he hadn't really heard me sing or anything. Mm -hmm. He just thought we were just, you know, bullshitting, joking around. And yeah. he comes over and he starts playing this beautiful, like, finger picking melody and I'm like reading the, the lyrics and I'm like nah, 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 and I start singing and he's like stops and is like dude <laughs> dude you sound just like Tracy Chapman oh you man totally <laughs> and I'm like Damn. I love Tracy Chapman are you kidding me yeah. and it was it was probably because I was just kind of nah, 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 you know I didn't have any mm -hmm. confidence in my range I was singing in this mm -hmm. little register and mm -hmm. but but I felt like something like magical happening and I'm like I'm writing a song right now I'm yeah. I'm singing these melodies that weren't there before. And mm. it's over this, you know, beautiful chord progression that my buddy's playing. And we worked it up and we took it to school the next wow. day. And uh, my teacher ended up having us come to every one of his classes. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's <laughs> and amazing. Perform this song. And, um, and, I, and he had a side band and he was like, man, you, you should come sing, you know, a couple. We have a singer, but we could always use another one. And um, I kind of got the bug and started going to his, they were a cover band and mm -hmm. we do some songs that I liked, some songs that, you know, the other, it was kind of a hodgepodge of, of styles really. Yeah. And then I ended up starting my own band, um, mm -hmm. you, still using his garage. Oh, wow. Like a real <laughs> Robert garage Nesbitt. band. Robert Nesbitt's uh, family was gracious enough to let us, you know, bomb their garage with terrible we were all learning our instruments at the same time. So none of us were that good, yeah. <laughs> but we, we got good together. And, uh, that was my first band cadence. Mm. Um, and, uh, we started doing clubs and, you know, right out of high school. And, um, you know, I always, I was always the kind of person that I didn't really know this at the time, but I always mm. visualized and I always saw myself. Yeah doing what I was going to do. Like I always believed mm -hmm. in it to the point where I felt like I was actually doing it. I love and it. I, which means to my day jobs, I was a terrible employee because I was, <laughs> I was so like, I was on stage at all, all times. I was writing mm -hmm. songs all the time mm -hmm. and I saw it and I saw it to the point where I just knew it was inevitable. It was going to happen. I just didn't know when. Right. That's and powerful. I did, I did that for like 10 years and I felt like I was spinning my wheels and, Long story short, 
I went out for American Idol and mm -hmm. got in front of the right people, you know? Yeah, yeah. You did phenomenal at American I remember when you, when you went on American Idol, watching you go through those rounds. And it's really amazing how, you know, your story for someone who's not really paying attention, it may sound, oh, so simple. It just happened to work out this way. But they still don't see the day-to-day, -day, the work, the grind the training, learning the instruments, learning the songs, learning the different cadences, yeah, learning how to work that magical box, that vocal box, that instrument you have, and be able to find your own sound in the midst yeah. of all the sounds you've been listening to all these decades. Oh, yeah. So you got to find your own. Yeah, you know? that, that, that was a hard thing. And I actually think I didn't... I don't even think I found my true sound until like our second record. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I can go back to that first record and I'm still like, <laughs> and I can hear, I can hear the influence. I can hear who I was trying to sound like. Mm -hmm. And, um, and once I got on the road, you know, you, you take all those influences, but eventually you don't have a choice, but to be yourself because you're doing it so much mm -hmm. that those old habits kind of fall away and you're kind of chipping away at your own and you're finding out what works and what doesn't. And, mm -hmm. and I think, around that second record I, I remember going in the vocal booth and i was like man i wish i could go sing that first record again mm -hmm. right right and so you know you you decided to go to american idol and just tell us like what is the pressure there is there a lot of pressure to walk up and just on the spot perform like that dude so that that first so i i'll, I'll walk you to the through the whole process because yeah. a lot of people probably don't know the behind the scenes stuff that happens before you get in front of the actual judges. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I was, um, I was going to audition in Memphis, Tennessee. And, um, that didn't happen because Katrina happened and they needed to use the, the facility to house people that needed shelter. Yeah. And so they canceled that audition. And I'm working a day job. I, I I was like, I don't know, I don't know where else I'm gonna go. Then the next audition is in Denver, Colorado. I live in North Carolina. I, I can't afford a flight. Mm -hmm. And um, I was gonna drive to Memphis because it wasn't, you know, that was that was a day drive. Yeah. And um, or maybe two days. And my uh, my boss ended up like passing a bucket around work raising up money so that I could go do this Man. and and which was wow. such a an amazing thing like thinking mm -hmm. back like they believed and they would come see us do shows and everything and they so they they already knew like they saw like they saw that I wasn't just on some pipe dream you know right was, they saw the vision they saw the, yeah. the vision and they saw the talent the potential was it, there yeah and so I fly to Denver and and I'm staying at the Red Lion right in right out in the parking lot of Denver Broncos Stadium. Hmm. And I get up at 530 that morning, get in line. There's probably, you know, 100 people at that point. Hmm. But it turns into like 10,000 once we get in the stadium. It's like 10,000 people. We're all given tickets and they call you up by, you know, your ticket number. And it's like a group of however many. And so there's like, for lack of remembering correctly, it was probably about seven to 10 producers and each producer had their own respective lines. Mm -hmm. So let's say each line had 30 people, the front of that line would go up and they'd all sing in front of those producers at the same time. And we we're probably spread out about 10 feet apart. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And it's just, it's like, go and all right, come on up and go. And I remember I walk up and asked me my name. Yeah. What are you going to sing? I was like, I'm going to sing. I put a spell on you from Credence Clearwater Revival or their version of it. I can't remember yeah. who did the original. And I just went, I put a spell on you. And everybody was like, skirt. <laughs> it was, I don't know if I was just the loudest dude out there or what, but um, I got like, 15 seconds in, he's like, go mm -hmm. ahead, you're in. Nice. And then yeah. I had to go in front of the executive producers. And then I had to go back. Um, the next day would have been Paula, Simon and Randy, but their schedule got thrown off because of the other auditions getting canceled. Mm. 
And so I had to go back to Denver a week later mm -hmm. to audition for them. I mm -hmm. get in. And then when I get home, they announce the makeup date for, for Memphis. It was in my backyard in oh, Green, Greensboro, North Carolina. Wow. But I'd already, I'd already made it at that point to Hollywood. So yeah. they took that as an opportunity to come like fill my backstory. And it, it, wow. it all like worked out. Like it was everything literally couldn't yeah. have lined up better. Yeah. And so they got to come meet my family and it just all of a sudden everything just felt like the ball was rolling in the right direction. And, yeah. you know, at that time they didn't really have any like modern rock guys on, mm -hmm. on the show. They had, yeah. you know, classic rock and like theatrical rock, like Bo Bice, Constantine and Carrie Underwood. That was the season before me that mm -hmm. made me go, okay, maybe this show is a little different now. It's not just, you know, pop and singing to tracks and all this stuff. They got a live band. They got, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they yeah. got other music. And maybe, maybe I'll get on there and last a week and get more gigs. Like that mm -hmm. was my, <laughs> that was as far as I thought. Like I'll go home and get yeah. more gigs. I'll have yeah. a name, right? And, right? and I won't have to like beg people to let me play in their club. Mm -hmm. And boy, did that, <laughs> that. Uh, oh man, listen. Yeah, I had no idea a year later I would be traveling literally around the world. I'd be in, Uganda or right. you know uh Djibouti Africa right. <laughs> or, or any like yeah. all the like never thought in a million years I'd yeah. see any of these places that I saw in textbooks mm -hmm. you know so wow that's amazing yeah, I mean, but you, you gotta so, remember the work the, for that they, started they, early yeah but to answer your question the pressure mm -hmm. was um I'd never felt any pressure like that in my life especially when it came time to uh, the televised portion where you're, where you're live and, and it's, we didn't have ear monitors. So it was like, you have wedges in the stage Oh man! and the bands way back there, you know, and oh, you can barely hear your own pitch. It mm. was, it was tough, man. And I remember going back and watching those episodes, like, Oh my God, I'm like <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> and, uh, but that feeling of, cameras are on was the most terrifying experience ever. Mm -hmm. And ever, every time we went back, like as a band and got mm -hmm. to perform on the show, I felt the same nerves as if those memories were still like on that stage. I was like, Oh, I feel it again. Yeah. Even though we'd been touring the world at that point for years. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that pressure was, was nuts. And, uh, I've always been, I never was one to, um, get upset by the criticism or, mm -hmm. or be like, man, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is he actually saying? What can I learn from what he's saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do my homework and yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do better next time. Right. Right. That's what it always comes down to. How can you take the criticism? How can you listen to what they have to say? How can you drop the ego, analyze it and figure out, is there anything you can impart to make yourself better for the next time around or to enhance what you're doing or give them a, a different look or a different side of you mm -hmm. show them your range, show them your, your braveness, your boldness that you can take risks and things like that. Yeah. It's pretty important. And what's interesting is all these things that you've gone through, like with America, like playing in the band and creating your own little band and, 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 and getting gigs and then going to try out for American Idol. All these things have to do with courage. And you know, you see a lot of people, have the potentially have not a lot but there's probably a few chris daughtry's out there hidden somewhere yeah oh they absolutely don't, they don't have the courage this courage is what has separated you from the pack the courage that you've actually been able to live inside of that courage following your passion and living inside of your own courage and taking those leaps of faith even though you know you could have failed you could have fell flat on your face you could have all those people at your job donate that money you could have went out there and got sent right back home instantaneously and knowing that you can come back home just like that as a complete failure, you know, basically, yeah. if you want to look at it that way. But you still took the steps to do it. And I think these types of things can be applied to any area of anyone's life. Absolutely. Because you can apply that to anything. It could be you trying to start your own business. It could For be sure. you trying to, you know, uh, take on a new job, at a, uh, a new role at a new at a new job or take on a different role at the same job. It could be raising your children. It could be playing a sport. It, yeah. The recipe is always the same. And always the recipe is courage, living your passion, and also remembering that fear is a choice. Because you could have at many, any moment, you could have backed down to that fear. 
You could have bowed down to it and let that fear rule you, but you didn't. You went out there, man, yeah. you rolled the dice, you know, and you and you yeah. put out your best effort. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, fear is is the enemy um, of of any kind of moving forward or going to that next step. I mean, yeah. it's it's inevitable that we'll feel it, mm -hmm. but but that's I, I feel like when you feel the fear, that means you're absolutely doing the right thing. Mm. Because if you don't feel it, it means it's too easy. Yeah. It, there's no there's no gain out of that. Um, whatever this next step is, if you're if you're you know wanting to rebrand yourself or mm. wanting to do something maybe very different than you've ever done, like I did with the videos from this record, like. Mm. Being independent now, you realize how much money these labels were oh, spending yeah. on videos, and you're like, "Oh, that's my pocket." <laughs> oh yeah, I've but been there. <laughs> but to bite that bullet and yeah. just say, "You know what? I don't know if I can swear on this or not," but <laughs> but f it, I'm doing yeah. this, and because what you get in return is what you actually saw yourself doing and what you right. truly wanted, and the creative and artistic. Um, validation and liberation of that is mm -hmm. it's worth the the all the hard work all the yeah. you know I, yeah. I i i even told my wife i said i might be broke after this video but <laughs> damn it looks good <laughs> hey, man, it <laughs> and, looks and i'm good. proud of it and it, and i'm like yeah. that's that's what i i wanted to combine cinema and mm -hmm. comic books and music yeah. all in in the same thing you know right yeah no it's it's a masterpiece and you know, like I say, man, you've you've displayed, man, so much courage. You don't know how much of an inspiration you are. Maybe you do to a lot of people out there. You know, I'm a I was a big fan of American Idol. I haven't watched it in, in a little bit of a few years now, just because I've been so busy. But when Ooh. it first started coming out, and the you know the first probably seven or eight seasons, I was into it heavy. Yeah, because I just like to see people's path that they the journey they go on, yeah. how much they believe in themselves, and how much yeah. they can really manifest their own reality. Even like to see if they didn't make it to the final round or they didn't uh, win it, it doesn't matter. Now I want to see this person was really good. How much of their own self power do they recognize that they can now make something out of themselves, regardless of winning that thing or not? Absolutely, that is not the end all be all. That right. is that is just a, a mere stepping stone to the next yeah. level of the game, mm -hmm. you know. And and I always saw it that way. Um, I never sought out to win i never thought of myself as as someone who would go on the show and win i i thought i'm using this as the audition to every record label i couldn't get my foot in the door mm. you know mm. and uh, I, I read this quote this morning that that i thought really actually is going along with what we're saying mm. success is the ability to go from failure to failure uh, from one failure to another without loss of uh, enthusiasm, Winston wow. Churchill. And that's that's the difference. A lot of people get mm -hmm. knocked down and they're like, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. But I never saw it as any other choice. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how many no's I heard or how many clubs I couldn't get into, no matter how many mm -hmm. gigs I didn't get, yeah, that never deterred me from believing that I was still worth or, or meant to be in that that position. That's the key. That's the same. You know, when I first got into music, a lot of doors got slammed on me. And um, I'm trying to do conscious hip hop, you know, with yeah. some artists that I found on Instagram, right? Donnie Arcade yeah. and Cruz and some other guys. Really talented people, but um, the mainstream was just like, poof, close the door, poof, close the door. You know, it was like, we don't want to, yeah. you know, we don't want to hear this stuff. And I realized I have to do it out of my own pocket. I'm going to have to take a risk myself and overcome, you know, the fear of loss and yeah. jump out there with it and we actually ended up you know making an impact and doing things there you go. And i think you know a lot of people just really have to understand that no matter what it is in life you have to be willing to follow your heart believe in yourself and if you actually um are following something that really is truly your passion and you work on that passion in other words you try to perfect it to the best of your ability not just lazily being out there with it and going i'm pretty good at this you know let yeah, me see yeah. what i can do but yeah. really working and grinding like you were in your math teacher's garage, you know, <laughs> you know, well, my math teacher was the one who gave us the assignment. But my friend's garage, yes, friend's garage or your friend's yeah, yeah. garage, you know, and you guys were out there grinding, just 
yeah. beating up the instruments until you got it right, you know, and that takes countless amount of hours and dedication and perseverance and to get to where you are now, man. So it's, it's just an incredible, incredible road. And tell me, walk me through that first time that, you know, you hit the charts and then finally making it to Billboard. Woo. Man, I was I was actually taking my kids to school yeah. um, uh, when I heard uh, It's Not Over on the radio for the first time. Mm. And it was so surreal because, like, I was on a major label then, so it was kind of, it was kind of expected. Like, I knew I was going to hear it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as much of a shock as when I was, like, 19, <laughs> and I went to the local college radio station, and they played my demos. That's when I felt like, what? <laughs> I made it <laughs> even though nobody was listening it was at midnight but like yeah. that was like you know those little moments or you know yeah. th th those are little carrots that kind of keep you going you know mm -hmm. um, but man when when it was it was pretty surreal to start seeing it everywhere like open up billboard magazine and you see that and it was like I don't know if I ever fully wrapped my head around what that meant um, because everything was so the it was so fast and furious. I was on from one tour to the next. I was on tour with Nickelback. I was on tour with Bon Jovi. I was wow. headlining club tour and we were we were out three, four months at a time. Dude, Man. it was it was brutal. My wow. voice was garbage. <laughs> it was, I mean, we were doing like six and seven in a row. And um, mm. I, re I remember it being so overwhelming, overwhelmingly busy that I, it took me a few years to actually go, oh, I did that. Oh man, we, we, we did that. Like we went and we, uh, we went to Uganda and, and, right and and played at an orphanage mm. you know for for bono's uh one campaign wow. we we um we toured europe with with nickelback we mm. we did uh sold out arenas with bon jovi like all of that stuff it took a while for it because it we were too busy doing it yeah, and it, yeah. there wasn't enough time to sit back and go mm -hmm. ah you know <laughs> and and i think a lot of times people do that ah way too soon. Yeah. You know, and and mm -hmm. that's when it's over. That's you know, it. and and I and I never quite felt like I never felt like, oh, this is it. I made it. Woo! Done. Mm. It was like, what's next? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, but what's next? Mm -hmm. Okay, but we still got to do this record. Okay, but we got another record to make. Mm -hmm. Like it was always on to yeah. the next thing. So I think now that I'm in my 40s. I can actually, you know, things have slowed down, especially this last year, mm -hmm. you know, I, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been home this long in like 15 years. Yeah. So um, it's given me, it's given me a, a much needed pause to really reflect on mm -hmm. where we started and where we are now and where mm -hmm. I'm at as a, as not only an artist, but a human being, you know, I'm a yeah. very different person than I was when, when that first record came out or when I, right. when I was on American Idol, I've, and I think that's traveling the world, traveling the world opened up oh, man. The, the world to me. Like it, it showed like, it's so crazy to, when you're, and I grew up in the South, very small town in a trailer, you know, and I, that was my bubble. Like I didn't, I wasn't around different <laughs> cultures, different ways of life. Um, different religions, different, you know, like it's so mm -hmm. many things that I got to see in my early twenties mm -hmm. or my late twenties. Um, it just, it literally opened my whole, um, uh, perception of life and the world and, and humanity. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for it too, because I think it's helped me, um, to be, you know, over the years, a more compassionate person, a more understanding, mm -hmm. more, uh curious more yeah. curious person you know mm -hmm. yeah that's incredible that's so true i'm glad you brought that up because traveling does expand the mind mm -hmm. and what i found since i've been traveling i've been down to 25 countries now and you know i've been around this world i've looped this planet at least three times and when you go to these places myself coming from 
underneath the gutter gutter in, uh, in Miami. I've heard then, your story, man. It's, uh, it's crazy. My, it blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. It blows my then, mind. They had get out there. to keep people from going in. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. The fan, that's right. So you heard the story, man. The, 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 they used to call it the Bermuda Triangle in Opelika. Woo! Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, and you call the cops. They're not coming in behind that gate. They're not going to come in. You know, just forget about it. Coming home yeah. every day and seeing chalk lines on the ground and stuff like that and people pouring Coca-Cola on bloodstains. I can't normal. even fathom. You know? So then you go from that, though, and you leave and you go out of the country and it's like, oh, wow. You know, when you start getting these different perspectives of lifestyles from the lowest to the highest and people living yeah. in huts all the way to people living inside of palaces and castles. Absolutely. All, you know? And you start to get this broad spectrum, this broad perspective of life and the different levels that exist out there. And when you break bread with these people and talk to them and try to understand where they're coming from or their perception of reality, it really expands you, you know, because yeah. what happens is you take on a fractal of their consciousness and it stays with you forever. And so yeah. by that method, you can only help but continue to expand. And so the more you travel and the more people that you come in contact with and engage the, the, the broader and more vast your consciousness ends up mm. being and a mind one stretch can never go back. Mm. So it's, it's a it's a great journey. And uh, it's a blessing that you've been able to do that because that really it's changed you. And I know it's changed me as well. Well, you've been to some places that I have yet to go. Uh, Egypt being one of them. And oh, I, I hope that I get to go there one day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, October of 2022, I'm doing a private tour to Egypt. Yeah, if you're not touring, if you're not somewhere in the in in the world, you know, with Bono yeah. or somebody, you're more than welcome to come <laughs> I on have, out. I have yet, I have yet to meet Bono. Oh man, I've never met him. I yeah, want it'll to. happen. When is it? When are you going? October 2022. Uh, for seven days, it'll be a private okay. tour by myself. I'll be the tour guide with two Egyptologists and one uh, homegrown guide, as well as security and and private. Let's stay. And all let's that. stay in touch on that. Yeah, yeah. I would love yeah. I would love to go. Yeah, it'll be it'll be it's a real incredible tour. I cl I, I went 1.5 miles of climbing inside the bent pyramid. That's how many channels and and shafts <laughs> there are in that thing. And I and had to you bear go crawl. Down. Yeah. So stay in shape, man, because you're going to yeah. need that fitness cuz you're in great shape. <laughs> I'm, trying. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm not getting any younger. Yeah, it's it's harder, man. You gotta, yeah. You know, I find myself trying to do movements that don't create impact now. <laughs> Dude, I, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a fitness guy yesterday, yeah. and I told him, I said, literally my first 20 minutes every day in the gym is spending is spent going, what doesn't hurt today? What can I do that doesn't hurt today? What can I work? <laughs> oh man, listen, like, we the same in, like, nope, can't work this today. Man, listen, I know the exact feeling. I know I, I was seeing it. I have a home gym. I built the gym in my home and all that stuff happened because you never know. Yeah, you can't go same. to the gyms anymore. We did the same thing. Yeah. It's like, man. So I'm sitting in there this morning. I'm going, okay, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay. What am I getting on? You know, yeah. <laughs> finally, you just got to slap yourself and get yeah. on something, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, man. But uh, I needed it. I'm glad I've had the fitness because. I had to crawl on my toes and my hands. You couldn't put your knees on the ground inside those shafts. You tear your knees up because uh, I'm too tall. I'm six foot four. So it was a little bit difficult, you know, four by four shaft, three by three um, shafts down to a two and a half by two and a half shaft. That's insane. Yeah. It was if, you know, if you have claustrophobia, don't go down there. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Some incredible. I have, my, I have to bring my knee pads and my shin guards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I would have known, I would have definitely had those. Yeah. I didn't realize it was going to be that brutal. Being I've been inside the Great Pyramid before up the Grand Gallery and went through those uh, shafts. You have, I have to bend, but they've got rails you can grab on and pull yourself up. And, you uh -huh. know, I'm only hunched over. I'm not really on my hands. Yeah. But these other pyramids, man, they are brutal. But the benefit is you get to see something that less than one tenth of a percent of the entire civilization on Earth has ever gotten to see or ever will see. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to be a part of that. Yeah. That's what makes it incredible, man. So, um. You know, you've gone, your journey, man, has been phenomenal. Uh, you know, you've gotten to where you are now. Any new projects that you're working on right now? Well, the new album, Dearly Beloved, just came out um, September 17th. And mm -hmm. we were fortunate enough to to be the number one rock album on iTunes for a week. Nice. I was like, I'll take it. I'll take nice. it. We were, number, we were the number two album next to Little Nas X on the wow. overall chart. Wow. And... Um, and that was all independent. And, and so right now 
we got a single out heavy as the crown that's climbing the rock charts and we're getting ready to launch a new single called changes are coming mm -hmm. very soon um and uh yeah man this this record to me um it was the combination of a lot of things you know i think just where i'm at as a human being now and and having my mind open to so many different things um uh, over the past few years and uh i think it's honestly i think it's the most uh conscious record i've ever done mm. um and uh there's there's so much hope in the message to every song on this record um and and i i really hope that people find that and and find strength in it um yeah. so far the fans have been just through the roof about it um beautiful and everyone's saying it's our our best record yet so uh i feel that way i just it's good to hear it from other people too yeah absolutely man and i'll keep yeah. sharing and putting up in my stories and so forth thank and, you man uh, i appreciate yeah, that you know getting the word out there so if you're listening to this podcast right now you got to make sure you go check out chris daughtry listen to his music listen to his new albums listen to his catalog which to me is absolutely sick you know i'm a big Thank fan you, of all types of music i listen to all genres you know right. i mean everything from classical rip hip-hop r&b rap you know soul country i listen to everything i like i like it all it just good music you know, is good music right that's it man that's it you know and i like the mathematical uh undertones of the music and the cadences and the bravados and everything else you know it just to me it just it just does something to me i just love it yeah. you know and one of the things about your songs is you know one of the things i look for in music that i like is the emotion that it draws out of me yeah and then i also have this thing called a dull factor how long how many times can i listen to a song before i become dull to it ah uh, and yeah. so even with my own songs i will listen to something 100 200 300 times in a row straight i mean no breaks no naps no stopping just consistently till i get to the dull point oh this is where it's at right here and i've listened to your music for decades and I, i'm telling you i have yet to get to the dull factor oh thank okay? you so much man I yet to get that. to the dull factor man incredible uh how did you end up getting on uh that uh that show the uh the mass singer i didn't even know it was <laughs> you man it blew me away <laughs> um i was actually filming that when we first uh met when yeah wow when, when i when we first messaged each other i was out yeah. in la uh filming that um and it was when i started getting uh really uh into your your content um and they they just reached out and i remember seeing a video years ago of ryan reynolds doing the um the korean version uh there was a whole youtube uh -huh. it went viral he was in a unicorn costume oh man and uh, it was the original show i think started in korea and uh and i i i remember when i saw that i was like that looks like so much fun <laughs> if i ever get the opportunity to do that i'm gonna jump at it and sure enough like everything i, yeah. I manifest everything like yeah. everything that i speak always ends up happening it just mm -hmm. it, it just does um that's not bragging it just it's reality that's power and, that's real power and and my publicist we were here doing a, a shoot for people magazine a few years ago and he said hey uh would you be interested in doing uh this thing called the mass singer i was like is that the thing that ryan reynolds did a couple years ago he's like yeah he's like yes i'm in let's do it <laughs> man and um and i you know they they had a, a few different costumes to pick from but i picked mm -hmm. the rottweiler because yeah like i had a, a when i was like 15 or 16 my mom watched this uh she would look after this blind lady mm. who had a rottweiler Mm. and she swore to me that this dog was was like you could go pet it she's sweet <laughs> oh man man oh, i went man. to pet that dog and it it snapped at my leg and i was like nope never Ooh. again never yeah. it didn't it didn't draw blood but it tore oh, my man. jeans oh man and, and uh and ever since i was terrified of rottweilers <laughs> so i was like like batman i'm gonna become what i fear the most and and I embrace it, it. <laughs> i love it man that's so powerful man man yeah. that's super powerful i love that man i love that yeah i mean by the third round or whatever you were in um 
I started recognizing some of the undertones of your voice. And I told mm-hmm. a friend of mine, I said, I think that's Chris Daughtry. And he was like, no, no, no. And I said, I think that's Chris Daughtry. <laughs> and then I was right. It was like mind blowing, man. You did a phenomenal job on that. that was, Thank that was you, incredible. man. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. That's incredible, man. You know, I could talk to you, man, obviously for hours. I know you're busy. Yes, I'm busy. Yes. You know, well, but thank uh, you for having me. And uh, I just man. realized that I didn't even put my full name on the tag. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll, it'll be underneath in the uh, okay, cool in the cron. But awesome. uh, you know, tell folks where they can find you. Yeah. Uh, so my personal Instagram is Chris Daughtry at Chris Daughtry. Uh, then there's at Daughtry, which is the band account uh, on Twitter. It's I think Daughtry official. I think. Um, and you can follow, you can join our Patreon. We just started where we're doing live streams and, uh, from our home, like just chatting with the fans for about an hour. Sometimes we'll pull the guitar out and break into songs and there's no rules. We just, we just have fun with it. Um, that's been a new thing we just started that, that has been a fun way to connect with everyone, especially when we're not on the road. Nice. Um, And uh, yeah, uh, all our links are in those uh, accounts and stay tuned where we got more stuff coming. Fantastic. If you had one thing you can leave the leave, leave the listeners with in terms of perseverance or motivation, anything you got, what would you tell them? Uh, have a clear vision for yourself, because if you don't, someone will give you theirs <laughs> mm. oh, yeah. um, and believe in yourself enough to know that you're worth what you dream you could have. Absolutely. I don't know if that made any sense, but, it makes but a lot of sense you have to believe it. You got to see it for yourself and, and truly believe that that, that is something that you're meant to do and, and do everything in your power to make that happen. Beautiful, man. Yeah. Chris Daughtry, I appreciate you, man. Love you. Billy brother. Carson, thank, you, thank so you so much, man. I appreciate you. We'll All talk right, soon. Man. Yep. Soon. Catch right. you later. All right. Be well. All right, man. You too. All right. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.